Hi, we're in uh, Guiang Bauto in Inner Mongolia and we're here to witness the Farmers Harvest Festival. And this is an event that started in 2018 and this is the sixth one and it showcases their um, agriculture of the region and it also helps promote the products that are produced in this region. It, 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 it basically is an area where the um, local farmers can, can show off their wares and, and what they've done and, and things like that. And it's, um, it's really interesting to be here um, and I'm looking forward to having a look around, maybe taste a few little bits and pieces and, and see really what, what it's all about. So uh, let's go and we'll explore together. What we got cooking here? I think there's maybe chicken. I think it's possibly chicken maybe. Yeah, I reckon that's chicken. I'm uh, not sure what this one is. But there's a lot of things cooking here. Whoa, look at this. Whoa. I reckon that's some sort of pork. Quite nice, it's sweet. Right, right, right. It's kind of like a biscuit. Yeah. Right, right, right. So it's made from the flour, a bit of sugar. It's a little bit sweet, it's nice. Kind of like a bread stroke biscuit. It's a little bit dry, I need a bit of water to wash it down, but it's okay. It's a live stream, I guess, and they're selling these little tiny pumpkins. And I see these in lots of places around here. They're obviously a very popular um, product. Okay, thank you. Well, this is um, in a Mongolian mooncake. I, I must admit, mooncakes are not my favorite, but I will give it a try for sure. Well, this is like um, a milk. It's like a milk candy kind of thing. Oh, this is oat milk. It's uh, naked. It's a brand name. This is oat milk. Oat milk's quite popular in China because actually a lot of Chinese people have a allergy to cow's milk. Um, so often they would use oat milk and they don't get that same um, reaction. I think a lot of Chinese are lactose intolerant. Um, because they, they don't have a lot of dairy products when they're growing up, unlike we do in the uh, West. These pictures here, these are actually made from uh, the corn. They, they call it corn skin here, but it's like the corn leaves, the outer like, uh, area of the corn. It's really good that they put it to use, because that's really, really quite beautiful art. It's really nice. very, very nice. This is also made from the husk of corn. And, uh, it's really useful rather than throw that product away. They actually make use of it. This is a seat pad, so you put it down, you sit on it, you, you can, uh, it. But it's really good that they, they use this corn husk to make these kind of products. It's uh, quite innovative, really. It's good. These, these are all made locally and they sell them in places like Taobao and maybe in uh, Goyin live streaming. So I say it, it, it really helps the economy for the local people in these more rural areas. It's really good. This guy wants to have you, are you farmers? Do you grow things? Do you make things? No milk. Oh, yeah. You feel you have a life here? And do, do the government help you to sell your products? And has that helped your income grow? Oh, that's great. Um, this is, yeah. Thank you very much. So you're the Agricultural Bank of China. So you help the farmers with finance, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And um, so you operate in kind of more rural areas or cities or both? Both. Yeah. 
Okay, so it's uh, it's really good to see a bank supporting local agricultural community because agriculture is a very important part to feed all the Chinese people. Yeah. Yeah. We really need to we need to, really need to support agriculture. Do you have any special like rates for farming communities in rural areas? You have some special products for them, right? Yes, yes, yes. 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 Oh, that, that's yeah. good. So, so they can come to you if they need to build some new factory or processing facility or something like this to help with their finance. And that's yeah. really good. Yeah, yeah. We're at an organic chicken farm. And as you can probably hear in the background, there's a lot of chickens making a noise. Um, now, there's a couple of things that are unique to these chickens. They are organic. they fed on a herb called Wan Chi. And this is um, a herb that Chinese people also use to make soup. It has some uh, health benefits. And as you can see, um, they're trying to replant a lot of this land. So there's a lot of bushes and the chickens are just, you know, allowed to, to sort of uh, wander around in, in, in and around the bushes. They, they go to these little chicken coops like these with the red um, roofs on behind me to feed. And also, You'll notice in this area, there's like wind turbines all over the landscape. And that again, um, it, it will get quite windy here. But this will generate a lot of clean um, energy in this area as well. To give you some statistics, it takes 180 days, which is around six months, to raise the chicken from a chick to when it can be sold. Um, and they pretty much service the local area. There's no big export over China. People just call up the farm. They can order a chicken and the selling price is 158 RMB, which is about that's about 17 or 18 pounds in, in British terms. It's actually quite expensive for a chicken, but from what I understand, because they fed on this herb, um, they are like a premium kind of chicken. It's not like a factory chicken, it's actually premium chicken. Okay, so what they're planning to do, they're planning to turn it into kind of a um, a sort of bit of a tourist attraction so kids can come here and see how the chickens are produced and they have these ostriches uh, for the kids to sort of pet and maybe feed and then they're also going to get some peacocks here um, which will um, you know, so they, they, they're going to turn this site into like a, a sort of visitor area visitor center from what I understand uh, I haven't seen one of these before this is like a little site it's like what you get out of a little box, push along the table. It's kind of funny, isn't it? Look at the, look at the, look at the size of it. <laughs> it's tiny, man. So this sign tells you that it's like a chicken hunt. So instead of strawberry picking, you go chicken picking. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Huyang County in Inner Mongolia is located in the Golden Latitude Zone of 41 degrees north. Eight agricultural products, including huanqi, flax oil and rapeseed oil, are produced in this area and are known as three of the eight treasures of Guiang by the locals. Huanqi is a herb that can be taken as a supplement or made into liquid extract, teas and powders. Health benefits are believed to include boosting of the immune system as well as improving kidney and heart function. Yeah, you see the, 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 it's in the middle of the river. What they do, they process it and they, they turn it into like a liquid sort of herb that um, you can drink. Um, so you, you wouldn't generally eat it like this, I guess. And, uh, there's a lot of it growing here. Um, and this is what contributes to their local economy. Sunflower seeds in China are a really big thing. They, like every supermarket, every small store, they will sell packets of sunflower seeds. There must be trillions eaten every year. I, I actually like them. They, they're, they're very nice, but it's hard to get them out. But this, this is one of the larger production areas in uh, Baotou that uh, produce sunflowers and, and you can see them all here and uh, this is open the, the, the shells and eat the seeds 
if you can get them out that is yeah there you go hmm. they, they dry them out actually these are a bit moist but when you buy them in the stores they'll be dried out and some they add flavorings to them as well so you get different like flavors and uh, guy will often drink beer and eat sunflower seeds and I, I partake in that as well sometimes so what this place is, it's a centrally government funded centre and it helps small um, towns and villages within Inner Mongolia who produce products. They have, um, they sponsor e-commerce professionals and, and tech professionals to come here to show the local people how to sell their products uh, online through like live streaming on platforms like Douyin and um, e-commerce sites like Taobao and Jingdong and these kind of platforms because obviously some of these people in the villages are not that familiar with high tech um, so they struggle to get their products into mainstream distribution um, but here is it, it's all funded by the central government but it's to enable like poverty alleviation in the smaller villages so they, they produce like local products that people in other parts of China want to buy so they teach them how to get them online and into the hands of those people around other parts of China. I hope that you like this video showing you life in rural areas of China and some of the programs that are helping to increase the income of people in these remote areas. If you did like the video, hit the thumbs up and if you like the content I produce, consider hitting the subscribe button. However, as always, for now, take care.